as we're giving these officers guns and badges to go out into the community and to keep us safe. And we've always paid close attention to whatever our department heads ha have suggested as far as appointment. But with the members of the board, sometimes one member or two members see something that the others do not see. We look to our board of selectmen. An administrator who's not elected is answerable to only the selectmen. We, the people, lose our voice and lose our opportunity to do something if we're unhappy with what happens. I notice that uh, under E, in page 47, E, that the town administrator can fix the compensation of all appointed officers and employees within the limits established by appropriation of the town meeting. We have personnel bylaws. We have a personnel board that sets the rates of the salaries. Then one that concerns me, page 48, Q, to approve payments and expense warrants. Now the selectmen should be looking over these expenses. And they should be seeing what we're paying. They, it's part of the job. I want to point out something, and I think you should listen very carefully. Something I've held on to for a long time. And it's some work that was done, office renovation work. It's quite some time ago, but it was office renovation work in an engineering office, in an administrator's office, and in a planning office. And it was charged to the water and sewer rate payers. That's not an appropriate procedure. If there was any renovations to be done, renovations should be done with an appropriation and a, and a plan uh, to, uh, to go forward with any renovations of any office. Mr. Mullen, I, I, I don't think that the sewer I, can, and water I'm sorry, payers can I interrupt you for a minute, please? realized that they're paying for renovations. So procedurally, your comments now should be focused on the reasons behind this. And I suspect we'll at some point be back to the main motion where some of this these comments. This is the reason behind it, because it's not a good plan, Mr. Moderator. OK. And why the voters should have an opportunity to, to express themselves on it. And one other uh, point. I clearly understand your intent, and so in, to accomplish your intent, the very last sentence on this is under Section 6 says, this act shall take effect upon its passage. My guess is you want to strike that to say, upon its passage, this act shall be, and then your verbiage, subject to a vote of the voters. Of the Correct. Town. Okay, so that's the motion. Has that been seconded? Seconded. Thank you. So, I realize, again, that the votes are here to pass this. Too much authority or power in one individual is not good for the town of Milton, and it is certainly not good for democracy. And I would urge the members to vote in favor of putting this question, after it passes here, it goes through the legislature and the proper procedure, that it go before the voters of the town. Surely we wouldn't want to deprive the voters of an opportunity to pass judgment on such a large change in the operation of our town government. Thank you. I didn't tell you who I was. I'm James Mullen, Jr., Precinct 5, Thank Mr. You. Moderator. Good to meet you. <laughs> this is my 42nd year here, sir. Thank you. I'm always impressed with the amount of town meeting members in this body that have served for such a high number of years. There was another gentleman I was talking to earlier tonight. Was in, he's here, been here for more than 30 years. I mean, it's quite impressive. Anyway, Mrs. Agostino, do you wish to be recognized to speak on the motion to amend? I absolutely do. And it's Diane DeTulio Agostino, Precinct 9 town meeting member, over 30 years also, but certainly not as many as Mr. Mullen. Um, Mr. Mullins obviously done his homework, and the opportunity, and I guess the moderator is aware of it, that his motion's completely legal, that we can move to move this um, mm -hmm. for the residents to vote it. And it's important to keep in mind that, you know, the present um, submission could take over a year to get through the legislature, 
you know, we're not talking about any one person. Um, as I think I stated last night, this was something that, you know, I campaigned for back in the 1990s. It's long overdue that we do begin to manage our town in a manner of a big business. And the you know, town administrator is doing a wonderful job, but we're not quite ready to move to town manager. Otherwise, they would have suggested the change in the language, the government committee. So last night's discussion, and I think this is relevant to his motion, about the police chief and the fire chief, I think is probably what led um, others to look at what other options there were to decide what to do here. And as a former select person, I would second the motion because I think it gives us an opportunity to really air publicly and let everyone vote on how they really want the town run. And that can't hurt, as Mr. Mullen said. Thank you. Mr. Flynn, do you wish to be recognized on the motion to amend? No, the merits of the article. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak to the motion to amend? Yes, sir, you're recognized. <coughs> And, and could you do me a favor, turn that so your comments are really to the town meeting members who sure. you're trying to influence. Thank this you. This works tonight? Okay. Uh, Terry McNeil, Precinct 3. Um, I would just like to say, I guess I'm one of the votes that is against your motion, I suppose, but a couple of points that I have. Um, one, you talked about democracy, and this is representative democracy, and the people elected us to make these decisions, and I think it's incumbent upon us to move the town forward with a model we all agree on. I think the... Mr. Hiss, maybe it was last night, talked about the work that he and the others of the Government Study Committee, who are along a very long political spectrum, came to this decision to get a town that's 30,000 people, a $100 million budget, to operate efficiently. I think we all say that. There are comments and concerns, maybe complaints, about how quickly the town can act. You hear that all the time. Well, this moves the town forward. And, it's a very well-drafted, we can talk about specific provisions to tweak, we can get there tonight, but we can't move into the 21st century as a large community, one of the largest towns as opposed to cities in greater Boston, next to Quincy, next to Boston, surrounded by these large cities. We can't move forward if we don't empower somebody to run this day to day. Our selectmen should serve, as discussed yesterday, as a board. They have a veto right over the department heads you're concerned about. They have the right they're answerable to us if you don't like their decision, if they, if they didn't veto somebody you want them to veto, then you run against them or you get someone to run against them or you call them on it. That's the representation they have and it's incumbent upon them to review those decisions. These people here, like all of us, work full time. Katie and I work in the same building uh, and I see her leaving the office at nine o'clock when I'm leaving the office and somehow she comes here and is one of the members of the Board of Selectmen together with Mr. Burns and Mr. Hurley who do the same thing. And they're supposed to run a town in addition to attending their families and other concerns. In the 21st century, it's almost impossible to think a government can move like that and none of us want them to. So I hear the concerns, I understand it, but drawing this out further and having everyone in town vote upon it who don't have, I don't know if it's the pleasure or the difficulty of sitting through a, a, a meeting like this, is probably not the best way to get us where we need to be and, and I think is exactly the problem a lot of us have with the town and how it moves. So I, I guess I, I would say that I'm one of the votes against you. Those are some of the reasons, but I understand and I hear that change is hard. I'm from a long line of Irish Catholic people. I understand change is very difficult, but I also know change is necessary. And I think in this case, I, I'd like to thank the government study committee folks who I don't know personally, but they clearly did a lot of work. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Cannon, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Susan Kiernan, Precinct 6. I find Milton to be a very special place because of our type of government. We have a board of selectmen that runs, runs our town, and we have elected them. We have a right to elect them. We also come here because we're part of the governing process. When I read through this article, it makes me wonder, what is left for the Board of Selectmen to do? It's the town administrator who has taken over all the governance. So we're basically now, well, is, it, is he a mayor? Is he so, somebody Susan, that is 
Excuse me, Mrs. Cannon. So I, again, I, I'm trying to make sure that we all focus the comments on the motion to amend mm -hmm. rather than the, the, the merits okay. of the motion in, in its entirety, which we will get back to after we okay. dispense of this. All right, uh, then I, I'll just say this, that I, I'm kind of of a mixed opinion here because I do believe that it's a, a very large issue. That is my point. I think it's a very big issue because I think it's an attempt to change the type of governance that we have in our town. I do think that the people in the town should be aware of this and should be able to weigh in, but I think it's going to be a huge job to educate people because we're here all the time and we can, we're part of the whole process. And it's a privilege to be part of this whole process. But I think it's going to be a huge education that we're going to have to do to prepare the town if we want the town to vote on it. And I'm not saying I don't want the town to vote on it, because I think it's a huge change for the town. Thank you. Thank you. Do you wish to speak? Yes, you are recognized. Virginia King, Precinct 3. Mrs. Kiernan said a lot of what I was going to say, but I was just wanting to add to all of that that while we do need to tweak town government, I'm not sure that we need to tweak it as much as this um, would do. I think that if we give it, give the opportunity to the townspeople to be able to look at this, to vet it out, to find out what it all means, I think that that would be a very um, classy thing to do, for one thing, letting people know more of what's going on in their town and that they have a right to make some kind of decision on that. Um, I, th I think giving it to the voters will give it a great chance to be vetted, and I ask that you support this amendment. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, do you wish to be recognized? Yes. You're recognized. You, Moderator. Moderator. Michael Chimman, Precinct 2. I just want to point out that there is a safety valve in the bylaws that lets the voters on any vote we take say, no, 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 we want to vote on that. So this motion can be imposed by the voters themselves. We don't need to approve this motion to allow the voters to vote on this. Uh, it's their right to do so under our bylaws. So I, I would urge not uh, voting for this amendment, Mr. Moderator, and urge that we do our job and the voters can always take over if they feel we did our job poorly. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak to the motion to amend? Okay, seeing none, I'm closing the discussion. I'm gonna wait for the position of the Warren Committee and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna reread to you the motion so that you'll have clarity over what's going on. At the very end of the motion in your warrant, there's a section six. It reads, this act shall take effect upon its passage. The motion to amend wants to replace that with, upon its passage, this act shall be subject to a vote of the voters of the town of Milton at the 2016 annual town election. If the voters shall vote in the affirmative, then the act shall become law. If the voters do not vote in the affirmative, then the act shall not become law. While the Warren Committee was tabulating their vote, there was a member indicating an interest to speaking. I made it crystal clear when I asked, does anyone else wish to speak to this motion? Because if not, I was going to close discussion. It's so important to do that because the Warren Committee has to take a vote and advise you what their position is. They're not in a position to do that until they've heard everyone speak. And so it's sort of, it's a procedural thing. Stop the discussion while they're voting. I don't want to impact and I have to have them re-vote. Mr. Hayes, you're recognized for the purpose of presenting the position of the Warren Committee on the motion to amend. The Warren Committee does... Are we here? Yes. Um, the Warren Committee does not support this amendment. So the Warren Committee recommends a no vote on the motion to amend. The Warren Committee recommends a no vote on this amendment. Okay. Mr. Neely, I don't know if you're trying to be recognized, but you're... Well, I need to call one more member. Uh, <laughs> one more member <laughs> 
So Mr. Neely, as the uh, proponent of the, of the motion, is going to give his, the position of his uh, town government study committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rick Neely, town meeting member, precinct three, and chairman of the town government study committee. The committee, the town government study committee. Rick Neely, town meeting member, precinct three, chairman of the town government study committee. Good. <laughs> Thank you. The town government study committee is unanimously opposed to the motion, the amendment. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion to amend say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The motion to amend is defeated. I see more than seven town meeting members standing in their place questioning whether the moderator heard the vote, voice vote correctly. So we will take a standing vote. Mr. O'Malley, would you please be a teller for, for this section? Along with Mr. Mullen, would you do that for us? Oh, no, no, you shouldn't, no. Mr. Chinman, would you be a teller in this section over here, please? Mr. O'Malley will help you with the duties. How about our two newest members of the school committee? Would you be the tellers for this whole section? Okay, folks, if you're a town meeting member and you wish to vote, you have to be sitting in the seats on this side of the aisle. There's too many people that walk in and out for me to, or the tellers, to ascertain who is trying to vote and who is just trying to go use one of the uh, facilities. Okay, no, uh, so the, the te Mr. O'Malley, the tellers in section one, I would like you to count all of the folks at the front of the room in addition to your section, okay? Tell us in section two, the entire middle section. Tell us in section three, uh, this entire right section. Thank you. Do you have a piece of paper or do you need one? Just use the Okay, all of those in favor of the motion to amend, please rise and stay, stand in your place until I ask you to sit.
Mr. Zulus, are we yet comfortable? Are we okay or not? Do you have the count or not? Yes. Okay. All right, everyone, please take your seats. Now, all those opposed to the motion to amend, please rise. Chairman, are we all set? Thank you. Mr. Doulis? Doulis, are we all set? Just let me know. Good. Would everyone please take your seats? Yeah. 
Mr. Chinman. Section one, how many yes votes? Section one has eight yes votes. Section one, how many no? Section one has 62 no votes. Mr. Zulis, section two, how many yes votes? Section two, 12 yes votes. How many no votes? 86. Section three, Mr. Irwin, how many yes votes? 37 yes votes. And how many no? 10. 10. Thank you. Thanks. On the motion to amend, which requires a majority vote, there are 57 yes and 158 no. The motion to amend is defeated. We are now back to the main motion. Does anyone wish to speak to the main motion? Mr. Flynn, town council, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, first of all, I apologize uh, for the new members. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is John Flynn. I'm an attorney and a partner with the law firm of Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, Lahane, and Quincy. I'm also appointed town council for, by the Board of Selectmen for the town of Milton. That's the town attorney position. Uh, the reason I asked to speak is some questions were asked after like, last night's meeting. There's obviously some confusion about the impact of this proposed legislation if it passes upon existing legislation regarding the position of police chief and fire chief in the town of Milton. And if I contributed to that confusion, I'm sorry, but basically if the, if the result of this process is a legislation which changes the form of government of Milton as proposed, the change will be in appointment and removal of the police and fire chief. That power is presently in the Board of Selectmen. If this legislation goes through as proposed, it would, that power to appoint and remove would be in the town administrator. There are two laws on the books now that confer that authority upon the Board of Selectmen. Those laws would be superseded, those portions of those laws would be superseded by this new act. But the rest of the laws that apply to the powers of a police chief and a fire chief would not be changed by this, the most important of which is the so-called Strong Fire Chief Act. Uh, the reason it's called that is that the Strong Fire Chief Act gives the control over the operation of the fire department to the chief of the fire department. That law is presently on the books. It is not proposed to be changed by this warrant article, and it would not be changed by uh, the legislation if it passes as proposed. With respect to the police chief, the law is somewhat more limited. We have a special act, and that special act is chapter 272 of the acts of 1989, applies mostly to how the police chief is selected, appointed. Again, I said it's by the Board of Selectmen how a vacancy is filled, that's by the Board of Selectmen, and how the police chief may be removed, that's by the Board of Selectmen. This legislation would change that, so it would change most of that act. What it would not change is the process by which the police chief is, uh, uh, the, the process by which a police chief is selected. That presently is in the bylaws of the town of Milton. It's not addressed in this legislation. And if this legislation passes, town meeting would be presented in the future with a proposed amendment to the bylaw, not to change the process, but to change the references in that process to the town administrator rather than the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. 
Does anyone else wish to speak to the motion? Mrs. Sheridan, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Linda Lee Sheridan, Precinct 9. Thank you, Mr. Flynn, for that clarification. That really helps. And um, just a, a slight follow-up, just going forward, could there be a process for community involvement um, or community input as there is in that bylaw that was discussed just now from the town that has a, a committee that works to together to um, interview and go through the process. So just wondering if going forward there could be that possibility of having um, the community input um, into the selection for the police chief. And then um, a few other questions, Mr. Moderator. The question I asked last night out of order, I again apologize, but on page 45, there's reference that's made to um, this new um, strong town administrator to serve for a definite term of not more than three years. I'd just like to know if that is, um, if that term, three-year term, could be renewed. And I'd also like to know, what's the timeline for the approval of this through legislation? How long does this take? Um, you Mrs. Know, what's Sherrod, if you could help me, where, where is okay. it that says for the term of three years? Sorry, page five, sec 45, section one, the third sentence down to serve for a definite term of not more than three years. Thank you. Because to me that reads that not more than three years is not more than three years. So uh, just some clarification on whether or not that could, that term could be renewed. So Did you, you're raising a question, does that mean not more than three years? Right. To, do, you want to, do you want me to keep going? I just have you two, can, two yes. quick questions. No, so, please do. And then what is the timeline, as I just said, the timeline for approval of this through legislation? I understand should it pass tonight, then it has to go to the legislature. I'm just wondering, would that be by the close of this year? Would it be next year? I just don't have a sense of that in my mind, and it would be helpful to know that. And then finally, um, I know there's been some conversation about changing the number of members of the Board of Selectmen to five. And I'm wondering what this passage of this um, article would have on that discussion. Would that remain that would we can still continue to talk about a five-member board? And if so, if not, why not? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hurley, you're recognized for the purpose of addressing the questions. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Tom Hurley, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, uh, Town Meeting Member Precinct 5. Uh, first of all, with respect to the term, uh, it, typically all of our uh, contractual positions within the town are three-year contracts. Uh, I believe by statute uh, we can't have a contract of more than three years. So that's why that language is in there. There would be reappointment at the end of the three-year period. Uh, nothing in this article precludes us from reappointing and entering into a new contract with the same person. Um, i trying to remember what some of the other questions were. Uh, so, so I can help you, Mr. Hurley. The timeline for approval through the legislature, is it this year, or next year, if this body would have voted? I mean, typically it's one legislative session, you know, one legislative season. Uh, it, it would be similar to what our, um, our, our liquor, you know, home rule petitions are, so presumably, you know, less than a year, um, you know, Sometimes they get fast-tracked, but, but assuming it's not fast-tracked, it would probably be close to a year um, before we see it back again. And, and the, oh, the, the, proce the process for the um, uh, police chief. The, the, the process would be the same, you know, so there would be a, uh, that same committee uh, that would be appointed. The only difference is the appointing authority, once it gets narrowed down to the three people, um, the three candidates, the appointing authority would be the town administrator as opposed to the Board of Selectmen. But otherwise, the process would remain the same. Mr. Sheridan, I believe, but I may be mistaken, you would also ask, there's a, if, if, the, if the Board of Selectmen, the number of members were to change oh. from its current to something else, would that be impacted by this motion? Was that the question? And no, it would not. It, uh, whether it's a three-member board or a five-member board, uh, the town administrator would continue to remain a strong town administrator, 
assuming that the legislature so approves our home rule petition. Ms. Sheridan, you recognize the purposes of a follow-up. Linda Lee Sheridan, Precinct 9. So just to follow up on the five board member, is that something that the discussion is continuing for the body to know going forward? I, I know at some point I had heard maybe it would be on the um, fall town meeting discussion. I'm, I'm just wondering where we are with that. Thank you. Mr. Early, you recognize? Thank you. Uh, my, my understanding is the uh, uh, town government study committee is still studying that um, uh, that issue and will most likely come forward with a recommendation shortly, uh, whether it's October or, or or beyond that. I'm not certain, but I would suspect it probably will be October. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, you're recognized. Ms. Ada Rosemarin, Precinct 2. Um, I just want to rise in support of this article um, and to say that I think we already have a model for this type of government um, on the other side of our community uh, and the school side of how our town operates. We have an elected school committee um, who um, has a, a hired school superintendent who runs the public schools. And I think that model works beautifully for us. The school committee is responsible for policy decisions. The superintendent, as the employee, has a staff that she involves in making critical decisions that are reviewed by the school committee. Um, and similarly with hiring, as was mentioned earlier, um, with getting involvement in community involvement in hiring decisions, the school committee, the, the, the superintendent um, has involved uh, parents and community members in hiring decisions, and that's worked really well. And I think uh, this position of town administrator could be a very comparable kind of a role. Thank you. Mr. Lawson, you're recognized. Uh, Malcolm Lawson, Precinct 1, town meeting member. Um, thank you, Mr. Flynn, for the clarifications. That, that was very helpful. I think you made it very clear. I did, I did have one last concern that I hope you can help me out with. Um, page 46, section C, to, sus to suspend or remove any person appointed by the town administrator, provided, however, with respect to any such removal, that if such a person is a department head, the town administrator shall first inform the Board of Selectmen with respect to such removal. Um, that, just seems like kind of a low bar to uh, when when it comes to uh, the termination of a fire chief or a police chief, that the uh, town administrator can do it as long as he informs the board of selectmen. Now, I'm sure uh, there would be contract language that would that may may, may uh, outline these things for a police chief or a fire chief. But if we look at page uh, 49, section 4, it refers to the process for the selectmen to uh, terminate the employment of the uh, town administrator. And it says the Board of Selectmen may, by the affirmative vote of a majority of its members, terminate, remove, or suspend the town administrator from office, provided, however, that further conditions applicable to termination, removal, or suspension may be addressed by the terms of any contract between the Board of Selectmen and the Town Administrator. Um, I would feel a lot better about this article if the police chief and the fire chief were also in Section 4 with the same terms and conditions for the termination of the Town, of the town Administrator. And so I would make a motion to add that language to section four, where it says to remove or suspend the town administrator, fire chief, or police chief from office. If, if you would, do you have that in writing, uh, Malcolm? Um, no. Let, no, I don't. It would just let, be to add those four words. Yes. Yeah. Give, me, give me a minute.
Mr. Larson, could you join me here for a minute? So let's disagree with the suspension of any person rising at the time of the So that would be the, the folks that you're talking about, right? Under this, they're going to appoint the fire chief and the police chief. Right? Well, uh, right. Under that, it, it appears that that also includes the fire chief and the police chief at the time of administrative appointment in the office and they terminated And all he has to do is notify the board of selectmen. I thought you said that. So, so stay uh, close by. To, so, you, so where it says to suspend or remove a person appointed by the town administrator. How do we how do we get them out of there? That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. So how about if the very okay? Now I'm just shut first. Uh, Okay, so if we add right in here, except, except the police of fire chief. Does that make sense to you, Ted? To accomplish his request, yeah. Okay, and then. Okay, okay, add them in right after that. Okay, so after we're town administrator, add Palmer, police chief. Or fire chief. Yep. So, are we, so are we, are we comfortable that will achieve your goal? Okay. So I no pass. No, but I want to make sure that how we understand that you're comfortable. Yep. Okay. So go back. I think the members would agree that this is an important motion before you and requires that we do our best to get it right. To accomplish the wishes of Mr. Larson, I believe what we need is to make a slight change to subsection C at the bottom of 46 and a slight change to section 4 you'll find on page.